but we will not shy from adversity. Niles called our will be stopped. The Brain. The infamous founder of the Brotherhood of Evil. DC Comics has no dearth of unique villains, and the one we have in store for you is definitely some, unlike anything you have ever seen before. This villain is a brain in a jar. Yes, you heard me right. No physical body, just brain. The brain is an old foe of the superhero team known as the Doom Patrol and features majorly in DC Comics. The Doom Patrol is made up of superheroes who all got their powers through traumatic accidents but then bonded together. The brain all founded the evil group, the Brotherhood of Evil, which has been featured extensively in the live action television series Doom Patrol, which is a must see. As a major antagonist group led by the infamous floating brain. This video will break down the course of his life and villainous activity. Let us get right to it. Now, before we get into our explanation, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is one small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. The most interesting comic book story arc featuring the brain. No one is born as simply a brain. Thus, you're probably wondering how this bizarre character even came into existence. Well, to put it simply, the brain was a genius scientist. However, he lost his body in a terrible manner. Back when he had a physical body, he used to perform experiments on animals to see if they too possessed an intelligent mind capable of intelligent thoughts. One of his most successful experiments was on a gorilla, which he named Monshore Mala. He trained this gorilla for over a decade and helped it reach a spectacular level of intellectual ability. However, with immense success comes bitter enemies. Brain's colleagues, a man called Niles Calder, who goes on to become Chief, the leader of the superhero group Doom Patrol, gets jealous of his success and tries to destroy him by causing an explosion. He succeeds, and this explosion destroys destroys the brain's body. And the only thing that survives is, well, you guessed it, the brain. Monshore Mala then comes to the rescue and takes the brain away from Niles, puts it into a container with a computer network, and keeps it functioning as a sentient entity. With this backstory in mind, we'll take a look at one of the brain's most interesting comic book arcs, which was featured in the 1990s Doom Patrol comic, Volume 2, Issue 34. This is both the comic book in which Brain seeks out a body to inhabit and admits his love for his right-hand man, Monshore Mala. The comic opens with the Chief trying to fix Cliff Steele's robotic body. He takes out the Brain and gets to work on the body, making this the perfect chance for the Brain to come and make a play for the body. We watch as Cliff's Brain muses on what it is like to be a disembodied brain. No, it is definitely not a fun experience, lots of bizarre sensations, feelings of lost limbs, and so on. However, things go haywire when the robot body develops a consciousness of its own. It no longer wants to share its body with a brain and attempts to kill Cliff's brain. He further adds that he has put in a command in his body by which if a brain was to be placed inside it and it tried to take control, the body would self-destruct. He would rather not live than be enslaved by a brain of any kind. In the meanwhile, the brain makes his way to the Doom Patrol headquarters with Mala in tow as he reminisces about how he educated Mala for over 10 years and turned him into the intelligent being he is now. He thinks about how he had originally decided to put his own brain into that of a gorilla's body. However, he could not bring himself to do it because not only was he attracted to Mala, but also Mala's brain was nothing short of a scientific marvel. Thus, they became partners and the founders of the Brotherhood of Evil. They reach the headquarters and walk in only to be attacked by the robot body. However, Mala successfully overpowers it, straps it onto an operating table, and places Brain inside it. Both of them ignore the body's warning of an automated weapon system that would self-destruct. A short while after, the Brain wakes up in his new body, rejuvenated and overjoyed. In all his happiness and ecstasy, Brain admits then and there that he has feelings for Monshor Mala. He confesses that he is in love with the supremely intelligent gorilla, and Mala also admits that he feels the same way for Brain. They lean into a kiss, and BAM! The weapon system activates, and the self-destruct command gets triggered, causing a massive explosion that presumably kills both Mala and Brain, leaving a confused Cliff who is still a brain without a body in a bat. An explosive comic book appearance from the weird duo indeed. 
The strange relationship between the brain and Monshor Mala. The strange relationship between the brain and Monshor Mala is noteworthy. The brain spent over a decade trying to enhance the level of intelligence of the gorilla and reached a point where the gorilla was intelligent enough to become his personal assistant. Brain named the gorilla and practically taught him all he knew. After Brain's accident, which left him with no physical body, both of them left the facility and went off on their own, later forming the Brotherhood of Evil and becoming obsessed with defeating the Doom Patrol together. Monshore Mala remained Brain's right-hand man till the end of his days in the comics. However, some interesting ideas came to light. Brain and Monshore Mala are some of the few openly gay characters in mainstream comics. Mala had the brain implanted in Robot Man's bodies in Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol run. The brain admitted to Mala that he was in love with him in his new body. Mala expressed his feelings and the two kissed. As mentioned before, before. This touching moment ends with both Brain and Monshore Mala dead. However, the duo often gets killed and then brought back without much explanation as to what happened. The Brain and Monshore Mala appear among the villains dispatched to the planet Psychonus 4019. In the Salvation Run narrative, Mala begs Gorilla Grodd to meet with him aside from the others when the Brain and Mala arrive at Joker's camp. Mala suggests to Grodd that his fellow gorillas and natural kings of the jungle, they should band together and use their combined strength to rule the entire region. Grodd mocks Mala for comparing himself to a proud child of Gorilla City, as an absurd science experiment. Mala smacks Grodd in the face and labels him a beast, inciting Grodd to anger and attempt to murder him. Despite the fact that Mala possesses a gun and shoots Grodd numerous times, Grodd retains the upper hand and is about to kill Mala when Brain intervenes, begging for Mala's life. Grodd reconsiders Sitters, but then picks up the brain and beats Mala to death with him, destroying the brain's outer hull and killing him in the process. Mala says that he is dying happy before breathing his last breath, uh, finding comfort in the fact that he and the brain would now be able to be with each other forever. They continue to be a tight-knit villainous duo in the recent Doom Patrol HBO series. This is the Brotherhood of Evil. I'm the brain. He's Mala. The Brain in Doom Patrol TV Series the Doom Patrol TV series debuted in 2019 and has quickly become a fan favorite of all those that like this misfit group of superheroes. Doom Patrol is a group of scared and downtrodden superheroes. They have all been through horrific tragedies that have given them their respective superhuman abilities, while also scarring and disfiguring them for life. The team has historically gotten together to explore some of the world's strangest phenomena after discovering their mission through the Chief, the Mad Scientist scientist who brought them all together. However, after the chief unexpectedly vanishes, the reluctant heroes are summoned to action by Cyborg, who presents them with a mission they cannot refuse. Thus, they embark on one more journey. Many fans will say that the plot was so unique and unusual that it combined the dark humor and the eccentric superhero genres well. The fact that the writers did an outstanding job bringing together the storylines by connecting the past with the present, bending reality, time and space, and blending personalities was highly praised, making this a must-see for Doom Patrol fans. However, wherever there are heroes, there are bound to be villains. And thus, the brain shows up along with the Brotherhood of Evil to pose challenges to this unlikely superhero squad. He has been quite prominent in the series. The egotistical brain and his companion, the bright and spiteful gorilla, Monshore Mala, were able to draw a time machine they witnessed in 1917 that traveled from 2020. They took it apart and rebuilt it as their own. Then they established the Brotherhood of Evil, a villainous organization dedicated to world dominance. The pair eventually became adversaries of mad scientist Niles Calder, who intended to stop them at all costs. To thwart him, the Brotherhood teamed up with the Nazi scientist Heinrich von Fuck, alien conqueror Gorgax, and the crafty and deceitful shapeshifter Madame Rouge, who they sent in their time machine all the way forward to 2021 to steal Calder's innovation. 
Calder later became the head of the Doom Patrol, a lesser known superhero that faced the Brotherhood on multiple occasions in the 1950s. The Doom Patrol finally vanquished the Brotherhood in 1957, causing the Brain and Mala to retreat to Boca Raton, Florida, where they would stay for decades. The Brain's nasty and arrogant attitude did not change over time, but he became more self-indulgent, yearning for a body and a life he thought he would never have. Madame Rouge returned from the past in 2021. However, she was not able to finish her original purpose due to her memory loss. When she regained it, she realized that she had been found by the now deceased Calder's posterity, a group of people who had been lab rats in Calder's immortality studies, and that they were attempting to murder her. She traveled to Boca Raton and sought the assistance of the Brain and Mala. She infiltrated Calder's gang, in other words, Doom Patrol, and kidnapped Cliff Steele, a human brain in a mechanical body, for the brain to put himself into. Brain, however, betrayed Rouge and attempted to kill her after the brain was transported into his new body safely. He left her to die in the forest along with Cliff's brain in a jar. He then went out to enjoy his new body, totally oblivious that the rest of Calder's test subjects were on their way to kill him and Mala. Rouge was not one to die easily, and she returned with Cliff, whose brain was transferred inside of a robe, a large robot used by the Brotherhood that she had discovered in the wilderness. While the brain was embracing his new body on a golf course, she used it to squash the brain and ruin a large portion of his new body. He then retreated back to his vacation home with what was left of it. Rita Farr, Rouge's enemy and the elastic girl of Doom Patrol, was waiting for him there. Mala had abandoned him in order to avoid the brain's goal to conquer the world. After being defeated, the brain attempted to negotiate with Rita, promising her retribution against Madame Rouge if she helped him rebuild his body. But a spiteful Rita chose to remove the top of his head and murder him by pouring boiling hot tea on his uncovered brain, bringing an end to his story. Why is someone without a body so powerful? The human body is wonderful. It has many capabilities. But what happens when there is no physical body and only the brain is left? Turns out in this case, the brain itself is still plenty powerful. Does anyone remember the horrific Tumblr text post making the rounds that referred to the human existence as a sack of flesh and bones being directed by a brain? Well, remove the sack of flesh and bones and the brain knows all. The brain was a man of genius intellect and thus was always supremely brilliant. His main weapon was his mind and his ability to coordinate the various villains. There can be no plans without a mastermind, and the brain is the best at the game. His ability to think up machines that sustain his existence, to put things together and chalk out plans and blueprints is unparalleled. His body, whenever he gets one, is almost always a robot or some other non-human entity that his brain can be implanted into. And when that happens, he gains the powers and abilities of his new body. However, there are some obvious weaknesses that come with a bodiless existence. His main disadvantage, of course, is how vulnerable he is. While the brain's container can keep him alive in his disembodied form, it has no self-movement or defensive capabilities, making him useless in combat scenarios and confrontations. Additionally, as a result, the brain's reliance on technology. The brain's capacity to develop a machine capable of keeping him alive is also totally reliant on his intellect. He also entrusts his movement and safety to Mala making him entirely dependent on the gorilla for physical mobility. This is the story of a man who was betrayed by his colleague out of jealousy and turned into a villain because he wanted to revenge. Practically everything was taken from him, including his body and thus his identity. However, that did not stop him and he went on to start an evil group that was consistently at odds with Doom Patrol. His character is highly fascinating and a brain floating about in a cybernetic flask, talking about science, equations, and evil master plans is always cool to watch, huh? What do you think about the brain? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. And you are the Robot Man. It's a pleasure to meet you, big fan. Not of you, per se.